Stan Jibalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV, Whiskey One Good Vibrations. little story for you, a little experiment that I conducted way back, I believe it was in the winter of 1987 to 88. It was probably around March of 1988 when I lived at my parents' house, right there, on a hill in Rochester, Minnesota. And it was winter time and the March winds had begun, the westerlies of March, which prevail all the time. Well, actually, the westerlies prevail up there at that latitude, but in March they can get pretty brisk. And this was uh, probably late at night, probably, I don't know, it was probably in the middle of the night, as far as I remember. That was a parafoil kite right there, a kite sloper antenna with a separate tether. 500 feet long. I remember the length of that wire because it was four wavelengths at 7 megahertz and that thing was flying out towards the east at an angle of about 30 degrees with respect to the horizon. Parafoil kites can fly in pretty brisk winds. Uh, the wind was probably around 20 miles an hour which is a good speed for a small parafoil kite. Parafoils are, are very unique because they don't have any, well, very unique or slightly unique or because they don't have any rigid parts. They just inflate with their own, uh, with the air pressure that is created by the wind. And as a result, they fly at a relatively low angle uh, as in contrast to a, for example, a Delta Conine kite, which may fly almost straight up. But 20 miles an hour is maybe a little little bit on the brisk side for a Delta Co-9, but it's about perfect for a pair of foil. And this was what was happening. The thing was flying an angle like this straight towards the east. Now a four wavelength random or end fed wire on 7 megahertz is going to have maximum lobes that come out at a fairly sharp angle with respect to this wire. Actually, if you were to plot that directional pattern in three-dimensional space, you'd get two cones. The major lobes would look like a cone going around that way with the axis at the antenna and another cone going back this way. But the cone that was of interest to me was the cone uh, that pointed towards the east and in particular the lower edge or side of that cone. And so I will hopefully now give you a little bit of a E-plane directional plot of what the uh, pattern of that antenna most likely looked like here in this particular elevation plane graph. Towards the right is east, towards the left is west. So we are looking straight north. The antenna would be right there where the zenith line intersects the surface of the earth, the house, the antenna, the kite, the whole assembly would be just one little speck there in this in this uh, e-plane graph and one of the major lobes then would kind of point like this another the other uh, side of that cone the upper edge of that cone uh, representing the top of the major lobe would probably be well this thing is just fighting me like a beast sometimes these computers you ever have them fight you like an animal, like wrestling an animal, some of these programs. Well, anyway, the animal lost, and the green arrow won, and that would be the upper part there. The other side, the other side of the cone would pretty much be under the surface of the earth, and then the wire would have an axis that would extend up like this. Well, 30 degrees maybe, about like that. So there would be the axis of the wire and the other side of course the other side of the axis would go under the ground but the side that interests us is this side right here now this low angle radiation towards the east right here proved to be a very interesting uh, phenomenon indeed because there was a ocean going vessel off the west coast of africa and if you plot a great circle from minnesota to the west coast of africa you'll find that that great circle heads out from Minnesota just about straight east. So on 7 megahertz CW, I worked that vessel with 100 watts of power output and got a report 
of 30 dB over S9 and that station was also coming in at my radio an old Yesu FT 101 remember that radio the signal came in at 30 dB over S9 on my radio too it was like he was six blocks away that station fell right into the slot right into the main slot of this antenna by coincidence and as a result came right down that slot like a next door neighbor would come down into my antenna just about enough to register on an s meter without any radio at all a field strength meter practically once in a while that kind of coincidence happens with kite slopers and balloon slopers and things you're at the mercy of the wind the mercy of the winds and you're at the mercy of the propagation conditions and the mercy of the length of your wire there are so many variables and they all just happen to line up just right and this was the result great fun ham radio never ever fails to surprise if you keep at it Stan Jabalisco W1GV Whiskey One Good Vibrations saying 73 for now and so long.